So this is what happens when you de-squeeze the free well anamorphic footage from your Mini 4 Pro. It's a 1.19 times ratio and um, the de-squeeze dimensions I'll give to you in about a minute. I'm flying in rural Poland in sports mode and I've used about 20 batteries with the anamorphic lens. Zero problems, I do make sure I do calibrate the gimbal first because it is a little bit heavy. But as you can see, it's very smooth. It looks really nice and it does give you that anamorphic look. I'm pretty happy there are no flares unless you look directly at a light source because I'm not really a fan of the blue flares. If they need to be there at all, it would be great if they were neutral. All in all, it's a really, really nice looking lens and it's great that it has ND filters. Right, we have the Freewell anamorphic lens on the Mini 4 right here. And the first thing I would do is basically go into control, go down to gimbal calibration, and I would calibrate the gimbal because it is a little bit of a heavy lens to put on the front of the Mini 4 Pro. But once you do the actual calibration, and I am recording the screen so you guys can see, the gimbal works and acts perfectly and I've had zero problems at all. Now Freewell did send me this out as they do a lot of stuff. Um, but I think it's pretty cool and it does a cool job. Now I have done return to home updated. return to home a few times and it's worked really really well. So we're gonna fly out and get a little bit above those trees. Desvidadrona! And we're um, just going to fly around a little bit so you guys can see what this looks like. It's basically um, forests around here, so there's not much more else than forests. Mini 4 Pro. I stick it on cruise control most of the time because that is the easiest way to fly. And you can get some really, really sweet shots. It is a good drone, don't get me wrong. It really is a good drone. Um, so let's have a look. Let's fly out this way and um, get a nice shot of the forest there. That looks pretty cool. Like I said, cruise control, absolutely superb. You just get it in a certain direction and it's going. And um, yeah, it's pretty sharp. I would just, you know, tap the screen just to make sure that the image is sharp because it is a wide angle lens, more or less. It is an anamorphic lens. It's not what you're using normally. So just get that on there. And I'm using an ND, I think, 32 or 64 at the moment. Just get that exposure down a little bit because it is a little bit bright. And as you can see, it does a nice job. You know, to de-squeeze it, it's pretty simple. I'll put all the uh, measurements you need down there for a 4K timeline. And um, that's it. Flies long, looks good. It's, um, it's pretty sharp most of the way, all the way around. If it isn't, then, um, you know, that just adds a little bit of, you know, cinema um, to your shots. And... Um, Generally, very nice lens, and it's cool. It is cool that it comes with um, ND filters. I've got to lift up a little bit or I'll crash into the trees. And there we go. And actually, the drone is that way, so I should be facing the, um, the controller that way. Bye. I like living on the edge. I've been kept here for weeks. The last time anyone let me out, I could see. My eyes have been picked out. My legs have been torn off and I've been left all alone in this hut. They come to feed me once every three days. All I can hear is a train in the distance and some wolves. It's horrible being here. I can hear knives sometimes at night. I wish they'd just let me out. Now, I do like getting these forest shots because they're a little bit eerie, especially at this time of the year where the sun's still in a weird place and it's a little bit misty. It looks like something from a horror movie. Um, you know, some of the trees are dead. There are trees lacking in places. As it's Poland, we do have quite a bit of fly tipping, I've noticed, which is a shame because these are beautiful forests. 
Um, and I also like getting really low and, um, you know, getting getting some nice low shots. Which aren't always safe in the forest because um, you just got to make sure that your return to home level is set at a good, good, good distance because um, it has lost contact when I'm here and the drone is over there and I'm right next to the tree. Sometimes it just, you know, boom and it's gone. And um, like I said, make sure, make sure that your sharpness is on because I found a few times with this lens that the sharpness kind of it disappears which you don't want to fly get a really cool shot and look at the image and go oh shit it's out of focus so this is a bit of a candid shot looking straight into the sun so the light source and there you've got the blue anamorphic flare i'm not really a fan of it like i've mentioned i wish it was neutral if it has to be there at all right it is on its way back as you can see and uh, we're going to check the um precise landing um the precise landing when it comes down i actually set it off let me show you guys right there on that bit and we're going to see in a second if it comes down in the same place now the freewell lens like i said it hasn't caused me any problems it does a really nice job the train was coming past literally when i was taking photos so i just changed and chased it for a little bit in sport mode but um yeah, it's not coming down in the same place. In fact, it's probably going to crash. Completely different place. That is really odd. I've actually never seen that happen before. Um, that is not precise landing. Um, we're going to have to go forward. And land it manually. What is that about? That is really weird. DJI. That was, that was odd. But um, yeah, that's what the um, Freewell anamorphic lens looks like with the, um, what have I got in here? And the 32. Um, so you guys let me know what you think of that. I, I think it's pretty cool. I think it has a, a place in cinematography. And if you like playing around with anamorphics, then it does a cool job. 